here today. I'm so happy to have you guys. This is super exciting. Say hi. Very first guests on the show. <laughs> hey guys. Oh, I see lots of faces coming in. Great. So you remember to turn on your video so we can see your awesome projects. And remember, we have a chat, so if you have any questions about the project, chat. you can tell us where you're from, you can tell us if you've had a birthday, or maybe you've lost a tooth. That's cool, too. My white candy cane. Zoe, have you lost a tooth? This is a good joke, just... Oh, no. Okay. Alice, have you lost a tooth? No. No. I've, I've lost teeth, but I haven't lost one. Recently. Uh, yeah. Recently. Okay. Right. All right. <laughs> oh, man. We've got um, people from all over the place here. Oh, how exciting. Let's see. This is exciting. California, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Texas, lots of Texas. All right. North Carolina. Howdy. This. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> oh. Awesome. All right, well, we're gonna get started here in just a second. Everybody looks like we've got a few more people to let into the class here, um, but we're gonna be making a bird box, which you can see a little bit. Woohoo! While we're waiting, can Alice tell a bird joke? I don't want to. Oh, okay, I'll, tell, I love I'll joke. tell a bird joke. <laughs> it's really a, a riddle. Okay. Why do birds fly south in the winter? Uh. I don't know why. Because it's too far to walk. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> she said it's too far to walk. That's why they fly. <laughs> She's being funny. Birds don't walk south. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh man, we got more tell people. Have to tell it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, my name is Jen and this is my daughter Zoe, my little mini crafter. And we're excited to welcome Jess and her daughter Alice. So you guys want to give a shout out and tell us a little bit about yourself? Here's yeah, we are so excited to be here. Our Alice is my little artist. So she teaches me things every day. And we are super excited to, to make some birdhouses today. And kitty. Awesome. All right. We're excited to have you. So um, we also have Karina here. If you want to wave and say, hey, Karina, so they can see you. Hi, everybody. How are you? Excited to get crafting today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can show you where you can find today's project and the instructions in case um, you don't want to follow along with us today or if you want to make another birdhouse tomorrow. So let's go ahead and share. So while Karina is showing so you the project, here, um, she's the one helping out with the chat. So if you guys have questions about the project, Please type it in the chat and Karina can let us know what it is and we'll be happy to answer. So from uh, the michaels.com homepage, you can search for craft stick birdhouse and it pops up right here. So it's super simple to find. And here you can view all the supplies, add them to cart if you need to. And the instructions are right here on this tab. So. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Karina. Okay, so as always, uh, when we do these projects, um, you don't have all the supplies, that is totally cool. You let us know uh, what you have or uh, what you don't have, and we'll talk about some hacks that you can do along the way. I think Jess and uh, Alice are gonna do her, theirs a little bit different. In fact, I think they have a different size stick than we have, so we're gonna talk through the project and um, so if you want to do this along with us, if you don't want to, uh, we record these so you can watch the video. We'll have it up on the site tomorrow. So just a reminder, chats for asking questions, put your video on so we can see your project and we'll get started here. So this craft, I have selected the craft sticks 
that's kind of a tongue compressor size. So you can see this is the wide one. And I believe Jess and Alice are gonna use the narrow one like a popsicle. Yep. Yeah, so they've got the little skinny one. And then you're going to want some pipe cleaners. And if you don't have pipe cleaners, that's okay. We're gonna talk about what to do if you don't have a pipe cleaner and also yarn. Uh, so any color of yarn you want. Mine's kind of a multicolor. I've got a couple of different colors here. And um, then some googly eyes. I've got neon googly eyes because you know me, I can't not buy neon. And then um, your kid scissors. So make sure you've got your scissors that you're allowed to use. If you don't, you can have mom or dad cut your stuff for you. And then um, we're gonna make this little guy right here. So check out, this is our birdhouse. It's made out of the craft sticks you can see here. We're just gonna decorate it. You're gonna need some construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, that is okay. You can use regular paper and you can just color it with markers or paint or crayons, whatever you want. And then we're gonna make this cool little bird here. He's made out of yarn and the pipe cleaners. And if you don't have yarn, you can use a cotton ball, that works. Or you can use a pre-made pom-pom. If you, you were gonna say that, uh, in case you don't wanna make it out of yarn, cause you know, it does take a little bit of time to make them out of yarn. So, all right, you ready to get started, Alice? Let's do this. All right, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is lay out. Now, if you're using the slim craft sticks, I believe you're using 12. Jess, correct me if I'm wrong. That's that is, yes, we are using okay. 12 tiny ones. Or not tiny so this is, this is important. If you're using the thin ones, you use 12. If you are using the, the wider one like I am, the tongue depressor size, you're gonna use nine. All right, so let me count them out here. And you wanna pick them so that they're flat. So if they have this, a curve to it, put that one back. You're gonna want a flat one so your house doesn't look all bumpy. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so I've got my nine craft sticks laid all side by side. And then I'm gonna pick two more flat ones. And these are gonna go on the back. So you can do a couple of things here. I'm going to glue these down using Elmer's glue. If you have your, yes, you can have the pink glitter glue. Zoe makes a good point. If you have pink glitter glue, neon glue, you can use those glues as well. Now, if you don't have glue or you don't wanna use glue, you can, you can use a hot glue gun if your mom or dad can help you with it. So no hot glue if you don't have somebody to help you with it. Or you can use tape if you want to use tape, because tape's cool too. What are you guys using, Alice? What was that? Well, what are you guys using to glue your so stuff? We're, we're doing ours a little, we're, we are using, um, we're actually using two different types of glue. So we've got Elmer's school glue, but we've also got the um, glue stick. stick. And both are working really well. Um, awesome. And we're doing, we're doing ours a little differently from you, Jen. We, um, I know you're, you're kind of gluing your sticks together first. We're just gluing ours to a piece of paper to start out. So I like we're that. Differently. So that's a great hack right there, what they're doing, gluing theirs to a piece of paper. That is totally cool if you want to do yours that way. And if you don't have craft sticks, you can draw the house out of construction paper. So you pick whatever construction paper color you want. I've got a pack right here. You just go through, pick out whatever color house you want. You can cut out your house and your roof all out of construction paper if you don't have the sticks. Totally fine. All right, so now that I've glued these down, so I've glued one across the back at the top and one across the back at the bottom. And I'm just gonna set this aside for a little bit so that the glue can dry. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut out our, our roof for the house. So I've used brown. 
And the best way to do this so that you don't have to measure or anything is you just take your, let's see, I'm gonna use a lighter brown today. You want a purple one? Absolutely. So what I, here's my piece of construction paper here. So I'm just gonna fold this in half so that, so see the long side right here. I'm gonna fold the long side in half like this. So it makes a little half sheet. And this is actually gonna give me two, two rows. And then I'm gonna cut from the corner. Oh, here, let me, one more fold. So just make a little bitty crease in the top of the folded side. So you're not gonna actually fold it in half. See how I didn't fold it? I just made a little crease here at the top. This is gonna tell you where you need to cut to. So you're just gonna cut from the corner all the way into the crease and then from this corner all the way into the crease. Is that gonna be hard? I think it'll be easy. Watch, let's see, you wanna do it? No, you want me to do it? All right, that's fair. All right, I'll let you cut the next one. Look, all the way into and Jen, the... Yes. While you're, while you're cutting out the top to your house, Alice is doing her top to her house a little differently. You want to show everybody what you did? Turn it around and hold it up for everybody. So she used more craft sticks to make a roof instead of construction paper. Oh, that's we're gonna genius. Decorate this. So lots of ways you can, you can build your house however you like, right? That is awesome. I love that idea. Right. So Zoe's going to finish cutting my roof here. So you cut from here, the corner to the top. All right. So while you guys are cutting out your roof, I'm going to show you a couple of different styles that you can make your roof. All right. So you can either leave your roof blank or you can decorate it. And as you see here, I've decorated mine and mine, I picked the wood shingle look. But you can do all kinds of things here. So I'm going to show you. So one of the ways you can do this is like um, with little half circles. Oh, thank you, Zoe. So check out. I'm just going to make a bunch of these little half circles. I'm just going to go along the edge like this all the way down. So see, I've done a whole row here. And then you go down the other side. Um, yeah, that's easy. Like this. You can leave it like this so this looks like the, the decoration edge. Or if you want it to look like shingles on a roof, you can go down with more rows and go all the way down to the end like the other one. So see, I've added another row. And you just keep doing Again. that. Down. Yes. yes. Can you um, recap what we're working on, what we've done so far, just to catch up a few people? Absolutely. I have plenty of time since my glue is drying. <laughs> to recap, we are going to be working on the birdhouse. So this is a little birdhouse made out of craft sticks, you can see here. And there's this cute little pom-pom bird that's <laughs> it has a, a roof here. So what we're using today includes craft sticks, card, uh, sorry, not cardboard, um, Oops, sorry. construction paper. You'll need some markers or some colors of some kind so you can decorate your house. And then our bird is made out of yarn, googly eyes, and a pipe cleaner. So if you don't have yarn to make the bird, that's okay. You can use a cotton ball or you can use a pre-made pom-pom that you can buy uh, if you have googly eyes, that's okay too. You can use construction paper. I'll show you how to make the bird's body um, with, you know, construction paper if you want to. You could use foam if you don't have um, So don't worry if you don't have craft sticks. Uh, we were just talking about you can make your whole house out of construction paper or you can draw the house and then make the bird. So if you have the stuff to make the bird but you don't have the stuff to make the house, that's okay too. So all we've done so far is we've glued our sticks together. And so we need to check in on these anyway. So I'm using the larger size craft stick that's more like a tongue depressor. And that one, oh, it wasn't quite dry. That one, you only do nine sticks across. So if you see, I've got nine going across and then two on the back to support. 
And then Jess and Alice are using the popsicle sized craft sticks and they have 12 going across. Yeah. But they're also gluing theirs to the paper. So if you want to take a look at theirs real quick, you can see. We've done ours a, a little differently than Jen. We just took a piece of um, construction paper. Uh -oh, we're losing this. And um, we glued the craft sticks to the construction paper and I'm drawing my roof on my piece of paper. And Alice actually, um, sorry, she had a construction fail. We are quickly fixing. Um, but she used craft sticks to make her roof too on her paper. So awesome. Tell me what you're gonna do next. Awesome. No. So then so then we had just started talking about making the roof for your house. And you can use construction paper, which is what we did. Um, you can use um, regular paper and just draw a roof and, and color, that's okay too. Or you can do the, use the sticks. Um, you can do it the way that Jess has, where she put the sticks up as the roof as well. So uh, again, the cool thing about Kids Club is use what you have and we'll try to help you along the way to make something cool um, in the end. All right, so the next thing, so I'm gonna set my, my little roof aside here. So Zoe, do you wanna decorate? Can you decorate your roof? Here, there you go. So Zoe's going to decorate the roof while I move on to the next step. So I'm going to show you guys how to make these pom pom birds. Oh, okay. It's a Christmas tree. Oh, a Christmas tree. We're going to have a festive bird house. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is make our little bird. Now, someone's using slivered almonds to make the shingles oh. on their roof. Man, That's an you awesome guys idea. really go to a new level. That is amazing. <laughs> All right, so um, so here's our little bird, and he's just made out of a pom pom, which I'm going to show you how to make. So this is my pom pom, which I made myself, and then here's the body made out of a pipe cleaner. And again, if you don't have pipe cleaners or you don't have yarn, that's completely fine. We can do these with a cotton ball um, or anything else, or you can draw a bird on your house if you don't want to make a bird, that's okay too. So, all right. So for those of you who are going to be making the little pom-pom bird, let me show you how to do that. So you're gonna take your yarn and just take four of your four of your pencils or your markers or whatever. I use pencils because they're a little bit smaller. And you're gonna put them together like this. So you see how there's four of them stuck together kind of in a square. And I'm gonna wrap my yarn around. Now, I like my pom-poms to be kind of fluffy. So I wrap my yarn around 30 times. You can do it as many times as you want. It, the more you do, the bigger and fluffier your bird's gonna be. But I found that 30 is about the right, uh, a right amount. So I'm gonna do 30. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right. So then you've got a bundle about this big. Now this is the important part because you don't want this to unravel. So the worst thing that can happen to your pom-pom is it can come all unraveled. So you're going to take your string tail that you have left and you're just going to put it in between these pencils at the top. So can you see how I've laid the yarn down in between two pencils? So I've got two pencils on one side two pencils on the other and you just pull it down tight. And what that has done is it's, it's pinched my yarn. So now it's not gonna come unraveled. All right, so now I'm going to cut the little tail off here. And then I'm gonna get two sections of, of yarn that's as long as a piece of paper. So that's about 11 inches. And you don't have to be super precise about this. So I've got my two pieces. Now, so just a second ago, you saw me put my yarn in between two of these pencils and the other two. So I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna go through the top one more time. So I've got two pencils on one side, two pencils on the other side. 
And I'm putting the yarn in between and snug against this little ball. And then I'm gonna go over the other side like this and go in between these two pencils so that you see here, you've got your string intersecting the, the yarn stripes going across. And then you're gonna turn it over and tie that as tight as you can. So you're gonna tie it down really, really, really tight like this. So you've got it on that side. And when you turn it over, there's where you're, you're doing good. And tie that knot as tight as you can. Just cut out of And don't worry guys, we're gonna do this again. No, no, uh, no worries. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut these strings off because I don't want to get confused when I start opening my pom pom up. So don't cut the knot, but cut down close to the knot and throw those away. All right. So now you have your knot side. And then if you turn your pencils a quarter of a turn, you have a side of yarn that doesn't have a string going across it. If you look on the back side, there's your string again that's binding it. So you wanna look down a side that doesn't have a string on it. And what you're gonna do is now you've created a channel. So this cool little pencil setup has given you a channel to cut down with your scissors. So take your, your scissors and you're just gonna open up the yarn. You're cutting the yarn and it's gonna start fraying out to the sides and that's okay. Just be real careful not to unravel your pom-pom. So when you've cut that all open, it's gonna free up your pencils on that side and you can take those out. Again, being really careful not to unravel your pom-pom. All right, so, you're, so one side's all frayed and the other side is still like this. And you're gonna do it one more time around the outside. Now, before you move ahead, if you want, if you feel like this is getting loose, you can put another, you can put another yarn string around to make sure that that yarn doesn't unravel. I'm gonna do mine now. You can do yours after, you can do it whenever you want. I'm gonna do it now just so it doesn't unravel. And again, you wanna make it as tight as you can, but don't let that yarn come unbunched. It's not the end of the world, but if it does, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to start at the beginning again. All right, so now I have my side that's not cut. I'm gonna go back. Oh, that looks beautiful, Zoe. And I'm gonna cut this side, same way I did the other one, down the middle, and then pull the pencils out. And now you have your pom-pom. with your yarn and you can trim up the sides because it's gonna be a little uneven. You can kind of see how it's got pieces sticking out. That's okay. You're just gonna trim that with the scissors, even it out. And then you're gonna have an awesome little ball of yarn. Pom pom. So check it out. And it's gonna have two tails here. So you've left your string, your second string that you put on, whether you did it in the middle or you did it at the end. This is the string you're gonna use to tie it to the ball. All right, so that was a lot. I know it, and I'm gonna do it one more time, okay? And while Jen's setting that up, I would, we, um, Alice and I are just, we, we bought a bag of um, Creatology pom-poms in all different colors, and we're using these to craft ours. Um, so, you know, if you don't have um, uh, any yarn, you can also, Jen mentioned at the beginning, you can use cotton balls, but um, these regular pom-poms, which I can't seem to hold, um, are also uh, really work really well for this project. Awesome. Yes, you might find that cotton balls are easier. And this is really just for anybody that wants to learn how to make the pom-poms or, or has yarn and wants to make the pom-poms out of yarn. This is by no means a requirement for your birdhouse. You can make that bird out of absolutely anything that you want. So, and, and I won't lie, the prefab pom-pom far easier than what we're doing here, but I wanna show you how to do this because I want you guys to know if you'd like to try it. All right, so I'm gonna make the pom-pom one more time. And again, if you don't get this, that's okay. You don't need the pom-pom bird to move forward on your birdhouse. We're just trying to give it some time to, uh, 
Give it time to dry and you hey, can Jen. make your bird out of anything you want. Yes. I think a few people had said they had just finished um, gluing the, gluing down their sticks. Uh, would you be able to show them the roof the next step after gluing down their sticks? Yeah, I can show them right now. So you're just cutting a roof out of construction paper. And so all I did was fold a piece of paper in half. So if you just take your construction paper and fold it in half, so that the long sides are folded in like this. And then you're going to crease, fold it in half again, and just make the crease at the top of the paper. So when you're looking at it, you're not actually creasing all the way down the paper. You're just making a mark here in the middle so that when you open it back up, you can see where you need to cut to. And you can measure it. If you want to do that with a ruler, that's okay too. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut from your, your open side. So see how it opens on this side? Cut from that corner into the crease you made. That's how you know what the center is. And then you go from the other corner back into the center again, and that gives you two triangles. So you've got two ribs. So if you mess one up, that's okay. You've got another shot. All right. So we're going to go back from here. So what I've decided now, let me just make a little shameless pom pom maker. We sell a pom pom maker that you know you can use, but not everybody has these. So I'm showing you guys a hack on how to make a pom pom. There's lots of ways to make these. Um, some people like wrap the yarn around their finger and they can cut them. I found that using they can, this. They can get your circulation off. Oh, that's true. Don't do it too tight. Zoe reminded me, if you do it too tight, you'll cut your circulation off. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good, good tip, reminder. Zoe. Yes. So <laughs> one, one good reason to use the pencil method. So your circulation is okay. All right. So what I found is if you use the pencils, if you don't have the pom-pom maker and use the pencils, you can get it really tight on these pencils. And I found that that gives you a better pom-pom in the end. Like you can see here, this little pom-pom, he's really tight, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one more time and then we'll have to move on so we don't run out of time, but you can always go back and watch the video or you can make your bird literally out of anything you want. All right. So I'm gonna get my yarn. And again, we said that we go around 30 times and you can do, the, you can do it 20 times, you can do it 40 times. It's just gonna make your bird bigger or smaller. So I found 30 works best when you're going around this many pencils. So that's what I'll stick to. Okay, so I've got about 30 rounds around my pencil. So while you guys are finishing up your, your yarn, I want to show you this again. Because you're using for pencils, you can go in between two of these pencils with your yarn like this. And what that does is it holds your yarn tight and keeps it from unraveling. So I wound that around the pencils and then I ran the yarn through the middle of the pencils and it's gonna, it's gonna keep my yarn from unraveling so that when I cut the tail, which I'm gonna do right here, you've got your little bundle and it's all nice and secure. And then you're going to cut your two yarn pieces. And I always stick with the, the size of a piece of paper is about the right size. So I'm going to cut two strings like this. And then I'm going to go around the middle. So again, how we went down the middle here to tie off the tail, that's what you're going to do with your yarn. So you want equal amounts on either side. So you're going to put it through the middle and then wrap it around the yarn ball. So see how the, this one piece of yarn intersects all these other wrapped in the pencil? So you're putting it through both sides. And then on the other side, you're gonna tie it together as tight as you can. So you get it as tight as you can because this part is what keeps your pom-pom uh, from unraveling. So super, super tight. Now I'm going to cut the 
the tails off of this one because I don't want to get confused. I don't need two sets of tails. So don't cut the knot, but cut next to the knot. And then I'm going to run my second one across. So this is the one that's going to allow me to tighten it later. So again, you're going in between two pencils and the other two pencils. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to do this really slow. So right in between the pencils like this. So it's in the middle, pull it down to, till it mat, or, uh, touches the yarn. And then you're going to do the other side in between two pencils. Just sliding in between like this. And then you're going to tie it. Now this second one, only tie it once because this is the one you're going to tighten. So tighten it down as tight as you can, but don't make a knot because you're going to come back to this. All right. Now on the side, it doesn't have the string intersecting it. So see, there's one side with no string in the middle. This is the side with the string. So you don't want to cut there. You want to cut on the side that doesn't have a string. And you're just going to run your scissors down the middle channel between those two pencils and you're going to cut open that yarn. Do it slow. It takes a little bit of time. Sometimes your scissors, you know, not being super sharp, it can, it can take a little bit of effort to get those yarn pieces cut. So once you've cut it, you can see it releases your pencil. So just take your pencils out, very carefully turn it over. Because again, you don't want this to unravel. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. You're just going to open it up, going down that channel that, that the two pencils create. Be real careful not to let it unravel. And then you're going to pull your pencils out. And then that one string in the middle that you didn't tighten all the way, now's the time to cinch it down. Just be super careful when you're pulling it down tight not to let your yarn unwind. And then go ahead and make it into a knot. And that's going to keep your yarn bundle. All I'm right. Make it mine into it. You want me to make yours into a bundle? I'll show you. Yeah. All right. So now that you've got it, so you see how there's little pieces sticking out? It looks a little frayed. You're just going to take your scissors and trim it up like this. Can mine be really fat? <laughs> yep. You can make a really fat bird or a really skinny bird, a green bird, a pink bird. All right. And that's how you make your pom pom. Now, I know, I know some of you are just joining in and you haven't made, made your pom pom yet, and that's okay. You can use a cotton ball. I'm going to show you how to do this in a, in a way that you can use a cotton ball. Um, or you can just draw one. That's okay too. All right. How's it going over there, Jess and Alice? Good. We're working. I've been, while well, you've been making your bird, my, my glue's not sticking very well, but we've been making. Uh, working on pom-pom birds, too, so his feathers don't look so good right now. But I just took, um, we used just pre-made um, pom-pom balls and um, took a pipe cleaner, and I think Jen's going to walk you through this a little bit more. Alice made a cat with her pom-pom ball, and show him your, she also made a snake. We've been very active over here making pom-pom oh, animals, so lots of fun things you can do with these. I love that snake. Okay, Zoe really perked up when you said snake. So, I <laughs> that. Okay, so now that we've made our pom pom. Oh, yeah, Zoe wants to show her Christmas tree. So, this is going to go on her birdhouse because hers is Christmas themed. So I love that. And if you guys want to show us what you're doing, uh, let's take a look. Ooh how it's going so far. We can absolutely look through what all you guys have made. I'd love to. And Jen, I brought some special things since we're making birdhouses. We brought binoculars to spot oh. these birdhouses. So show us what you're making. We'd love to see. I spy a birdhouse. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> oh, man, we've got some amazingly color. Oh, oh wow. Birdhouse, a colorful pom-pom bird. I'm going to have to take tips from you guys. I love all this colorful. <laughs> oh, we've got little people. Oh, guys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> love these. Oh, my goodness. There's one that's like every other stick is a different color. Thank you. That Thank is you. Amazing. I can zoom into your face. Oh, we got a little beady bird, a little tiny bird. Lots of people working hard. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you how to put the body on this bird. 
And again, I'll reiterate, you do not have to make your bird the way I'm making mine. That's totally fine if you want to use something else to make it. I'm just showing you how to do this with a pom-pom and a pipe cleaner. But you are free to do it either way. And I'm going to show you how to do this part a couple of times too because it can get a little confusing. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to make a bird body out of a single pipe cleaner without having to cut it. I know the instructions have some cuts and then you have to glue it and I'm really impatient and I don't like watching glue dry. So I figured out how to do this with a pipe cleaner, not having to cut or glue it. All right, so you're gonna start with one end and you're gonna make the beak first and you're gonna do that by folding it in half like about, about a half an inch in. So see, I'm gonna leave it out just a little bit so you can kind of see what I've done here. There's a little tiny piece and you're just gonna fold it back on itself like this and that makes your beak. All right, so then once you get the beak, you're gonna fold it straight down. So see what I've done here? I've made it into, it looks like an L or a foot. So there's your beak. You can see it, I'm gonna open it up a little bit. There's your beak. And this is your neck. And you're gonna go two fingers in on the neck and then you're gonna fold it back out. So it's in this shape. I'm gonna go really slow while I do this guy, so hope you don't get frustrated. I just wanna make sure everybody can stay caught up. All right, our beak, our neck, and our body. And then you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna go straight down. So see, it's starting to look like a stair step, isn't it? So we did one finger width, two finger widths, one finger width, and then one more finger width, and you're gonna fold it back in. So now it looks like you're making a box. All right, so beak, neck, body, these are your legs, and this is your feet. So once you get to this point, you're gonna start going back. So you're now you're gonna bend it back the way you came, and that makes your first foot. And then you bend it Reverse it back. So now you're making like a zigzag. So you zigzag. And then you bend it back again. So now you have an M. And that M, those are your feet. So you, when you bunch them together like this, now you have a little set of feet. So see that? I just made bird feet. All right. So now let's revisit. It looks kind of like a dinosaur with a really long tail. So you have a beak and you have your neck, and you have your body, and you have your leg, and then, you have your feet. and then you're gonna go back up the legs so that you have this little tail sticking out. See, it doesn't look like a little raptor or something. And you're gonna take the very end of your pipe cleaner and make it into a loop. And you're just gonna tuck that loop underneath where the legs and the body are. So, so now it looks like a turkey. And then you're gonna take the top of the loop and you're gonna press it down all the way to the back. And look, you just made yourself some wings. All right, so that's it. One pipe cleaner and you've got your bird body. Okay, so I think that's enough. trying to make a pink snake, Alice. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do this one more time, but I just wanna show you, show you what the finished project looks like here. So th this is your beak, this was your neck, that's your body, this is your legs, these are your feet, and then these were your wings. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your pom-pom that you just made, and you're gonna set it on the back of the bird like this. So see, when you set the pom-pom on the back, check that out. It gives your bird no, look at that. and it gives them his feet. And now you can stand it up. And the reason why you kept these strings is you're gonna tie the strings around the bird's body. So the pipe cleaner, in other words, you're gonna tie it around the bird's body a couple of times. And that's gonna, that's gonna secure your pom-pom to your pipe cleaner. So it holds your body on. So I'm just going to tie it a couple of times here. 
Do you know of any alternatives to the pipe cleaners that well, yeah, we can of use? Course. Oh, yeah, so you can use foam. Foam stands up really well. It would be my next recommendation if you have craft foam. Um, if you don't have craft foam, you can use uh, cardstock or construction paper. That works too. They can get So see, okay, so once I've tied it to my body, now I'm going to take my scissors and cut cut the strings off because I don't need those anymore. be hard for like. And then you have your bird, and all you have left to do is put his eyes on, and we'll do that in a minute. So do we do we want to see the pipe cleaner one more time? Okay, I'm seeing I'm seeing yes. So we'll do the pipe cleaner one more time, and then like I said, guys, if you don't if you don't uh, get to see it, or if you're still working on another part, we can absolutely. I mean, we've got the video that's going to go online. You can watch it, um, or you can you can use uh, you can use foam or something to make a beak, and you're gluing it onto the bird. I chose this method because I didn't want to glue a bunch of things onto the bird because we're already going to have to glue the eyes on, and it gets kind of messy if you put a bunch of glue over your pom pom. Okay, so one pipe cleaner. Man, this pipe cleaner looks like it's been used. It's all crumpled. All right, one pipe cleaner, used or not. Oh, Zoe did use it. All right, so use pipe cleaner here. I used it to make pretend popsicles. Oh, popsicles, we should do that one time. All right, so you're gonna bend about one finger width of the pipe cleaner, so you can see here, and you're gonna bend it all the way back. And this makes your beak. And then you're going to take that and bend it straight down like this. So your beak's up here. And then this part coming down, that's your neck. And that's going to be two finger widths. And from there, you're going to bend it straight out the back. So now you have beak, neck, back. And then you're going to go down one finger width. So that's just one finger width, two finger widths here, one finger width here. That's how you measure. Nothing fancy here with rulers, just my fingers here. All right, and then these are the legs. So one finger width, and then you're gonna bend it back out. So remember, this is where the box is starting to look like a box. It's okay, it's all right. Glue disaster here. All right, so once you've come out here, these are your feet. So this is where you start to, you start to bend it back. All right. Oh, here, put the glue, put the glue down. All right. So you've got your first foot here. So I've come out and I've come back. And then I'm going to bend it one more time. So this is where I make it look like an M kind of. All right, so I came back out and then back in. So now if you pull it apart a little bit, you can see it looks like an M or a W. So when you push that all together, that makes this feet. Snake. Oh, you made a snake, wow. Woo. Look at Zoe's snake. Check that out. Oh, I love it, Zoe. Ooh, it's got eyeballs. My favorite kind of snake. The kind that can see. Okay, <laughs> so here are my feet. All right, so let's recap real fast. We have our beak, our neck, the back, holding the legs, and the feet. So once you get the feet made, you're gonna go up the back to the middle. And this is where it starts to resemble a dinosaur with a really long tail. So see, kind of looks like a little raptor. All right, now you're gonna take the very end of your pipe cleaner, and this is where you make it into a loop. So you just loop the pipe cleaner back to the middle, like this. So the pipe cleaner comes back to the middle. I bend it around so that the tail, or, or the end of the pipe cleaner is secure. All right, mm -hmm. so here's your beak, your body, your feet, and then you've got this loop. You're just gonna press down in the middle of the loop all the way down to the back. And that's what makes the bird's wings. All right, so now you kind of see a side view here. All right, so we have the beak, the neck, the back, the legs, the feet, and the wings. And this is where you take your newly created pom-pom and you're going to set it right in the back of the of your pipe cleaner. So see, I have some room. that's where your pom pom goes. Yeah. And you're going to wrap your your ends of your strings around. Okay. That's what's going to tie your pom pom to your pipe cleaner and secure it. 
All right. So as promised, we'll do a different way as well, just so you can see, like you can you can use um, any anything, paper or foam, and you can make the beak and the wings and stuff like that. How's it going over there, guys? We're doing well. Um, show our progress, Alice. Alice is kind of forgot hers. I've been working ahead a little bit because. Um, so I've got my house decorated and I started working on a pom-pom tree as well. Oh, there goes my <laughs> But I finished my, oh man, he's all falling apart. <laughs> to Jen's point, glue and pom-poms, difficult. They've got to dry, but. <laughs> um, I did my bird a little differently. I just cut bits of pipe cleaner and glued them to the back. Alice made a little flag for her for her birdhouse. We're gonna put on her birdhouse. American bird. And Alice has a fun fact about Alice knows um, a fun fact about our state bird. We're from Texas. So Alice, what is the state bird of Texas? Um, well, it's a mockingbird. It's a mockingbird. Does anyone else, can everybody else tell us, if you know your state bird, tell us what your state bird is? I know North Carolina is, is the cardinal. It's the only other one I know. Wait. A quail. That's it's interesting. A, a quail. The eagle. That's the, the national bird is the bald eagle. You're Wait, right. Mommy, yes. The dove is like a piece of love. So if a dove was like a bit the state bird, the state would be all love. All love. That's a, that would be a beautiful bird for a state. The dove. Yes. I love all these birds. Bald eagles, mockingbirds, cardinals. Bluebirds. Bluebirds. We have some bluebirds in our backyard, don't we? Thank you. Wow, we have, uh, yeah, we have bluebirds around here too. Morning doves, they're loud. How are your birds coming, Jen? They're, they're pretty, pretty good. I just glued the eyes on this bird so you can see his, oh, his nose is kind of off to the side. Okay. You can also see his eyes. He's got a really big, this may be a toucan. His beak is enormous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, you can use a cotton ball too, so like we discussed, um, you can take uh, paper and you can color it, you can take uh, cardboard, uh, or um, well, you could take cardboard even, but you can take construction paper. So if you're going to make a beak, I would recommend, you know, you make a little stand of paper and then put your bird off so that you have something to put your glue on. So glue on and then you can glue it to your cotton ball. So if you're if you don't have yarn and you want to just do that, let me fly real quick. And on. With your See, so that's pretty easy. The problem is, this is glue a bunch of things on there. Then you've got to real, you've got to really be careful not to, you know, move around until it's all dry. So for the googly eyes, got my neon googly eyes here. And I'm just putting a little bit of Elmer's glue on the back. Yeah. And there we go. So check it out. Like now you could make if you're using a cotton ball, you could use a you can use feathers and make little feet. You can use feathers and okay. paper and, and make little just, things um, for it. Do that in a triangle. And then put you can do anything you want. And then put it here. That's the cool thing about crafting is it's it very and flexible. The and I stuck it to the thing. All right. So I think my house is dry. Okay. Ah. So where's the owners? So I'm gonna I'm gonna glue the roof to my house now. While you're gluing, Jen, could everyone show us maybe some of your birds that you're making? We would love to see them. We'll get out our bird spying binoculars. You can't see here. I can. Magic binoculars. You wanna look? Oh my goodness! Look at that. Whoa! How cool! I oh, I love that one. Show us some more. Let me see everybody's. They're so cute. I see a blue bird, a pink bird. Oh, look at that one. A purple bird. A rainbow bird. <laughs> a rainbow. Oh, no, the rainbow bird, bird is my favorite, too. Okay, my beat song. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, we have Great a Great job, bird. guys. Fancy bird. Making the American State Bird wear. Man, you guys are great. White, white feet. Mm -hmm. My feet's kind of going over there. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a second. So the next 
thing I'm gonna do, and some of you may have already started this, and if you have, that is totally fine. What is this? You're gonna, you're gonna make your birdhouse with, uh, it's very important that you put a hole in your birdhouse because you need a way for the bird to get in. So I'm just gonna- Well, you can just put it on. And color it in, make a nice little hole. It's not a real hole. Just, I'm gonna ask why is your bird- making a hole with a marker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can just glue it like that, Alice. I'm just glue it to the And then I, okay. I think I'm going to put windows on my bird house. I'm see them because it's white on white. No, I'm in the car. Oh, well, why don't you just. Now, you guys can decorate this any way you want. If you want to uh, make it look like a real house, that's okay. If you want to make it look like polka dots, actually, I think I'm going to do polka dots on this one. I already I did windows. You want to do polka dots? There's brown. Like polka dots on here? Yeah. yeah. Can can I do pink ones yep. Too? Do pink ones and I'll do green ones. We're going to do green and pink. Yeah. Now, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to glue your bird. If you've made a bird, you're going to glue your bird to the bird. So. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can actually glue the bird straight down to the glue, to the birdhouse, or you can make a little stand for it, which I'll show you while Zoe's coloring. So what I did is I took another set of popsicle sticks and I just cut uh, the end off of a couple, and glued them together and glued them down. It takes a little bit of time. So if you don't have a lot of time, this method may be too slow. If you do have a lot of time, this one looks nice because it looks like he's standing on a perch. So if you don't want to make that, then you can um, you can just glue the bird straight to the house. How did you guys put your bird on, Jess? We, um, <laughs> with uh, varying degrees of success, we are gluing ours as well. My glue oh, okay. is dying. So it so <laughs> keeps falling off. <laughs> but um, it really wants to live in this house, I promise. Yes. It will one day. <laughs> Good example of why glue is not always <laughs> your best option. Table work. Yes. So here, I'm gonna, for the sake of time, I'm going to actually just glue my bird to the birdhouse. And then I won't be able to move it because once you put the glue on, you need to let it sit for a little bit. But I'm gonna put them right outside the door here. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue here on the back of the pom-pom. And you can do the same thing with your cotton ball. Oh, the eyeball came right off. That's super awkward. Okay. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna put my other bird on here. So again, on the back of the cotton ball. This is my put him down here. Oh, I love it. Are you gonna glue your bird on? Sorry. All right. So I see a couple of birdhouses here. I'm All right. Put, oh, I'm gonna just. All right. So you can see our birdhouses. Now you can decorate these as much. As you can see, I put grass on one of them. I gave this one windows. Uh, look at the bird tree. God. It's really up to you guys. Thanks. Get it to come over there, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, and my cat. How will I put on my cat? Oh, we've got some sort of decoration going on to ours here. It's a rainbow. rainbow. So this one's going to have a rainbow roof. I saw a lot of people out there that like rainbow colors. So this will be great. Orange. Somebody did an orange bird with purple feathers. That sounds pretty. Oh, somebody did a bird bath. That's awesome. Oh, look. I love the right. creativity. Well, this has been an immense amount of fun. I am so glad you guys got to join us for our craft today. I still like the pom poms. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This has been we we Alice and I have really enjoyed our time with everyone today. And can you come say thank you? Thank you. Thank you, Alice. I'm so happy you guys could join us. Did you have a great time? That's we awesome. Did. Here, show show Jen your finished. We're gonna hold it up very delicately because it's so. Very delicate. But she has, she has a snake and a cat and a bird in her house. Oh my goodness! I love the bow. And a bow. Every house That's needs. Amazing. A and pom pom pom. <laughs> oh, I hope you guys can join us again. I've had a lot of fun, so this has been really good. 
All right, guys, remember, as always, you can share all these cool crafts that you've just made with us. If you want to put them on uh, Facebook or Instagram, just remember, use our hashtag, which is hashtag make it with Michaels. And then we can see all the cool stuff you've done. So again, super fun time. Uh, we have a very special uh, kids club coming this Saturday. So our first time doing a Saturday kids club. If you haven't signed up already, please sign up. It's going to be super awesome. Oh, and we would love to see you guys there this Saturday at noon central time. All right, Jess, Alice, Bye. We'll see you guys. We'll see you next. Okay. Bye. We had a great Bye. time. Thank you guys. Bye.